Hey there, are you ready for our next riveting experience? Well, buckle up, the fun and excitement is about to begin. Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by, I appreciate you. Today we're gonna to talk about my version of the landing gear or sidekick, um, basically a cart that attaches to the kayak. Now, my plan was to, to just simply buy the, the groovy landing gear, uh, but as I worked through it and I did my research, I found a lot of people who were complaining about specific things that happened with their, with their landing gear. And I think a lot of that problems that people were having was because they were not installing it properly or uh, abusing it to a certain extent. I, I would say that a large percentage of the people who use those products uh, are happy with them and that they work just fine. But, you know, that 1% of the people who are complaining, um, I, uh, it got me thinking. Uh, and I'm one of those people who I prefer to make something even if I can buy it and in that process of making something sometimes you you run into something that's a, a better product um, something that works better than the commercial thing you know when those guys are trying to build that commercial product they're trying to come up with a solution that will fit all the kayaks because they're trying to sell them to everyone and I'm trying to I'm trying to get my kayak to, to function well so um, I did a little bit of research, I came up with some alternative products and uh, done a little extra work and I'm going to show you a video about how I put that together and how, it, how well it works. And, uh, so come along for the ride, well, so to speak, come along for the ride and uh, we'll, we'll show you how the cart system works. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what these guys are. So essentially they are a stowable cart. They attach to your kayak and allow you to stow the wheels on the kayak, which makes it super simple to get in and out of the water. It's a great idea. I love the idea. That's why I want to build my own, right? Um, that's why I want to have one. So let's talk about how these guys are constructed. They have an expandable extrusion that allows you to put it on multiple widths of kayak. Makes perfect sense. We have um, some tabs where you bolt it onto your kayak. That's how it's attached to the kayak. We have stainless steel legs and a wheel on the bottom. Uh, all of those seem like uh, great ideas, relatively lightweight, low cost, easy to understand, easy to install, easy to use. All that's great. Um, and so I understand why they made all of these design decisions. But here's where we run into some, some problems, right? And this is, again, the problems that we're experiencing are probably a really small portion of the, of the total ownership, but they do happen. So we have a very small section here that bolts onto the kayak. It's like probably a four-inch at max a four inch section uh, and you of course you can customize this but this is the way they ship a four inch maximum area that bolts into the kayak and all of the weight and all the vibration and all of the shock goes into this these two bolts that are bolted to your kayak so a lot of pressure in that one spot uh, then we have a a leg which is possible to bend if you're going at a if you're moving at a pretty good clip and you hit a large rock on with your wheel or whatever um, and the kayak has to come to a stop well what usually gives is this leg it's it bends and we see on the forums that people are asking how they can buy another leg so I we're, we know that they, they do bend and it, this is a potential concern. Um, in this particular case, we have the plastic wheels. And if you've ever rolled a, a cart across a, a, a shop, a dolly across the shop, when it hits a small pebble, it comes to a screeching, it comes to a screeching halt. It just stops. Well, we have something similar here, right? A small rock um, on these wheels will stop them from rotating. And when that happens, again, all the weight and all the momentum goes into the leg and you get a bent leg. The other thing that happens with a, with a plastic wheel is they don't have any shock absorption at all. They transfer all of the cracks, bumps, shocks, all go up the leg and into the section where uh, it's attached to the kayak. So they're not very forgiving from that standpoint. So um, when I take a look at this guy, I, I see some potential design uh, concerns. And those are, the, those are the concerns that I see. But again, I understand why they did it, cost, weight, and uh, they want it to be um, streamlined. So when these are stowed, they're, they're tight against the kayak so you can continue to paddle. All those are great design decisions. I understand why they did them. But for me, right, if I'm going to build something custom for me and my kayak, it's got to, it's got to conform to my requirements. So my requirements are going to be, uh, it's got to be durable. And it's got to be relatively easy to use. If it's hard to use, I'm just not going to use it, right? So it's got to be relatively easy for me to use, and it's got to be ultra durable. What I don't care about is weight, 
Um, and if it does those other two things and cost is less of a concern for me, um, I'm willing to pay a little bit more for something that's never going to break. That's what I want. I want something super durable and, and easy to use and isn't going to break and cost and weight, not as big a concern. I also care, don't, don't care about the streamlining because I don't paddle. You know, very seldom do I ever paddle, probably have in the last three years paddled three minutes. So streamlining, also not a concern of mine. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to come up with something that, that conforms to my criteria and uh, come along. Let's see what, uh, what I come up with. Okay, let's let's talk about my search for 12-inch wheels. So you, they're remarkably difficult to find. I'm looking for inflatable wheels that were 12 inches. Ideally, I wanted a plastic rim because of the slightly less weight. Um, and I just, all I was looking for was the wheels. But I stumbled into these, which are transom wheels that go on the back of an aluminum or inflatable boat and allow you to transport the boat over rocky areas. Um, which is exactly what I'm trying to do. Now, the only thing I had to do was figure out how to how to move from the transom up to the side of the kayak. And I think I have a plan for that, how I can make that work. So yeah, it just seemed like the perfect solution. So I actually went out and bought these guys. And the reason why I bought them is they, they were made out of stainless steel. So I don't have to worry about them rusting. Well, I have to wash them off in the, after salt water, but they're relatively uh, uh, maintenance free. Um, they look like they're pretty well built. The axles are actually welded in, which I thought, oh, that's going to be that's going to be plenty durable. And you can see just looking at that that the thick wall thickness on that tube is quite thick. Uh, it looks like they were going to hold up pretty well. And then the clips that they that they snap into, they're all, it's a spring-loaded system, so it looked like I could do that one-handed too, maybe with a little modification. Uh, so that looked like it was going to work. Uh, I really, I really liked the whole thing all the way around. It looked like it was going to work perfectly. So this is what I ended up buying. Now, my only real concern is that I won't be able to submerge that 12 inch tire uh, well enough to be able to snap it into that clip that I might struggle with that. I think I can make it work. I, I have an idea of how it might work, but we'll see. And if that doesn't work, then my thought is that top pin, I could just hinge around that top pin a lot like the bracket that's in the, the lower left corner there. Um, just permanently mount the, the top pin so that it rotates in the in the um, clip and then have the bottom one just move and snap in um, so all I have to do is push it down to snap it in um, raising and lowering it I think that that would be certainly doable so that's my plan for right now that's my, that's plan B but for plan A we're gonna try to use the existing clips that come with it and see how those work so let's see how I'm gonna implement them Okay, so here's my initial design idea here, and I don't know 100% that this is going to work, just what we're going to try to do. So um, we've got these guys, and this is all two scale. Um, I've, I've worked it all out that this is the approximate height of these things. Um, I'm going to mount the clips to a two inch piece of aluminum, and insert it in that two inch piece of aluminum is going to be inch and three quarters. So I have a total of uh, half inch walls. Uh, excuse me, quarter inch walls that will uh, I'll be bolting through for these for these clips. And then on top of that, I'm putting on a, a four inch plate on there. And when I have all the stuff cut out, I'll show you. Um, so I think that we'll have a total of a half an inch of aluminum um, that the legs will bolt onto or the clips for the legs will bolt onto. Uh, I think that'll be strong enough. And uh, the the wheels, unlike on the Landing gear are going to be centered directly below the the shaft that I'm working on, so there won't be any any leverage beyond the the uh, the arm length. So I think that that will be a little bit less stress on the hull as well. So I'm also looking at putting in an eight inch plate that bolts to the kayak, which is substantially more than that three or four inch plate that comes with. So I think that should help out a lot. Um, I'm going to have to manufacture a second set of clips that allow me to clip the legs in on top to stow them. But that right there looks like it's going to work. But, you know, I've been wrong before lots of times. So maybe I'll get three quarters of the way through this <laughs> to scrap the whole thing. I don't know. But right now it looks like it's going to work. Uh, my one of the, the issues I have is putting the the bar below the seat. So the seat's going to have to be on top of that bar because that's approximately where the seat's going to be. It's a little further back, honestly. But um, 
Yeah, I don't know how that all is going to work out. We'll have to see. That's a. It, I may end up having to put it behind the seat like everybody else does. I don't want to because I'd like it as far forward as I can, but that's as far forward as I can be and still be bolting into the into the track. So we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Uh, but that's that's one thing I might have to adjust for. So that's how that's my plan. Now that you've seen some clips of me out on the water, putting the, the wheels on and um, installing the wheels, and you've seen my thought process and how I came up with the design criteria and how it got to this point, I'm now going to show you uh, some clips of me building this so you get an idea of what went into the, the whole build process. Um, and then at the end, I'll do a quick review about um how i like it and what i plan on changing with it if anything and uh throughout the rest of the videos that you'll see over the next several months of me doing videos of the kayak you'll see a lot more of this because it's integrated in a lot of uh, a lot of the other aspects of the build out on the kayak so stay tuned it's going to be uh it's going to be riveting <laughs> Okay, I decided that instead of making you listen to what a, <laughs> sounds like noise from a dentist chair, uh, I would do a little voice over here. So I, my initial thought here was that these were going to need handles because your fingers were awful close to the, the clamping action. And I thought for sure I would get... Uh, I would get caught in the clamps once in a while and it would pinch and that would be painful and annoying. And so I thought, well, let me just get my hands away from these. I'll put a handle on it, make things real easy. And so to do that, I'm just gonna drill a hole through these pins. Simple, easy peasy. Well, except for those are pretty hard in stainless steel and it's really hard to drill through that stuff. So um, plan B. I decided I would just uh, grind a groove all the way around the pin and then I would mount a, uh, um, a handle using that. And so uh, this is just me and I'll fast forward through the rest of this. Um, this is just me putting, uh, putting the handles on. All right, as I was bending this up, I realized I'm going to need something to protect my fingers from this this metal that I'm bending up, so uh, this wire. So I thought, well, maybe I should come up with a plastic handle portion, so that's what I decided to do next. Yeah, bending this wire, was it was a real challenge. Uh, I bought this wire, it's stainless steel, it's pretty heavy duty, and I bought it for making uh, spinning lures for musky uh, lures, and it's really challenging to work with. And how I managed not to swear on camera constantly is amazing to me. Um, anyway, I do manage to get them uh, wrapped on there and on both on both uh, wheels, and uh, they, were, they turned out great. And... You know, I'd like to say that I planned this perfectly so that when you lifted the the handle up, that it would snap onto the top of the of the uh, shaft there. But 
uh, that was just a happy accident. That it does do that, and I can flip it to the other side. So if I need to, uh, if I need to switch the handle to the other side of the the wheel structure, that I can do that. But um, that was really a happy accident. It turned out, uh, thankfully, but that wasn't part of the design. Okay, I went ahead and cut the pieces out and uh, I'll go ahead and sort of mock them up here so you can see how they're going to go together. And I will do video of me actually uh, drilling and bolting those together as well. So here's the first piece. This is the insert that goes inside the square tubing. This is a two inch square tubing, inch and three quarter square tubing. Both of them have an eighth inch wall and this slides inside the, that unit there like that. And now I have a full quarter inch wall that I'll be through bolting through. Now, the next piece is a quarter-inch plate. Uh, the other pieces were real simple to cut out. Just use a chop saw. But this one, I actually had to drill some holes here in the corners. And I used a hacksaw to, to uh, cut that out. Then I used a, a belt sander to clean it up a bit. Uh, it was quite a lot of work. And uh, sorry, I didn't videotape that. Um, this guy actually is going to be bolted on the side like this. And the idea behind this piece right here is to add strength to the, to the legs so that it doesn't rotate back and forth this way, okay? So uh, that's a quarter inch plate and that will be through bolted four places. Now the next piece that goes on is gonna be the clip that the legs fit into. And that's gonna clip on this way and be through bolted on as well. And that's going to look about, yes, about like that. All right. Now, when I pull the legs off of here, I need some place to put them. And I had some, some inch and a half, inch and five eighths uh, U-channel laying around. So I made that piece out of that right there. And that will bolt on generally in this way here. Um, and this is to put the, the leg in when you're stowing it. So it'll clip in the same way as it does when it's uh, clipped in to be a cart. Then we have a piece of uh, plate aluminum that's going to go on the bottom. Also quarter inch. Going to be through bolted through here. Um, I don't know exactly how it'll where it'll go here um, until I get the kayak. Yes, I put, I did all this before I got the kayak, so that might have been a bit premature. But um, I'm I'm pretty confident with my drawings. Uh, so this is going to go on here, but I will wait till I get the kayak to bolt it, so I make sure I get everything in the exact right place. But generally speaking, that's that's the uh, the way that those are all going to go together. So I should give you an idea of how it all bolt together and go on to the kayak. And yeah, okay, it looks a bit elaborate when you compare it to the groovy landing gear, but uh, it is, like we said, the SUV or the Jeep of the, of the landing gear market. So um, that's how they're all going to go together. And uh, all right, so now we have our clip on, generally in the position that's going to be in. And here are the legs. And I added this portion right here because... Uh, I thought it'd be easier to have a handle to pull up on it with. So that's what that guy's for. Um, now these guys slide in this way and you pop that up and they slide in. Now I think what will happen is um, it's going to be a real pain in the neck. These are going to be floating up here like that. And it's going to be a real pain in the neck to get them to go down. But I think if I uh, push them down a little bit and pedal forward, then the water will pull it back. And if that's the case, and they'll snap right in. If that's not the case, I'll have to come up with another methodology. Uh, 
I thought about putting a a, a bar on here, a couple other things that I can that I can work with. So we'll we'll see. I'll come up with some way of making that work. So that's that's the current design. All right, here I'm uh, prepping my pieces that I cut out previously. And yeah, I didn't show you how I cut all those out. I, I use a chop saw and I chopped them to length. Um, I'm thinking if, uh, if there's enough uh, requests for it, I'll do a drawing so people can uh, have the exact lengths and dimensions, all that stuff. If people are interested in that, write it down in the comments. I'm happy to oblige. So first things here, I'm just going to be uh, using the existing plate that I that I cut out. And again, I apologize that I did not videotape that because that that would have been uh, been a lot of uh, a lot more uh, time involved there. It was uh, a lot of work getting those plates cut out. But anyway, I'm just using those as a template. <laughs> I knocked my foil on the ground. That's great. So I use WD. 40 for cutting fluid it helps cut uh, um, metal when you're when you're using uh, any kind of uh, milling in this case drilling um, and I after I get this this hole drilled right here I'm going to put a, uh, a bolt in it and um, use that as the as the clamp. So now I have one bolt in it going on to the the next hole. I think the uh, I think the drill bit was wobbling a bit there, so I swapped it out. Stick a bolt in there. I do get smart here at some point and go and get my impact driver. <laughs> so I don't have to turn all those nuts by hand, but. I had a moment of angst here thinking that maybe I put the uh, holes in the plate in the wrong spot, but uh, that would have been typical for me, but I didn't do that. I was able to uh, put the bolts in and they, they cleared the interior portions just perfectly. It was right about in here I realized that the bolts that came with the wheels were either a different thread count or metric. I'm pretty sure they were metric. Anyway, I now have different sized uh, threads and nuts on an installation, and that drives me nuts, but it is what it is. I wasn't going to go buy more bolts because I had these already, so I'm just using them. And then my chipmunk voice here is basically talking about the, the bolts being too long and that I will cut them off at some point. All right, I did cut those uh, nuts off. I didn't make you suffer through that. Ground them smooth so won't be cutting my line. And uh, now we're gonna get it ready to go on the kayak. Better put the wheel on there, make sure it's gonna fit.
don't sit in the kayak with it, sit in my sawhorse. What I'm doing here is basically trying to decide how far out from the edge of the kayak this needs to be mounted. And I want it as minimal as possible with a little bit of room for error just to make sure I get it right. So that's what I'm doing. That's why I have the marker in my hand here. I'm going to mark this so that I have it exactly the way I want it. Because once I put this part down and I cut it off, it doesn't matter how many times I cut it, it's not going to get any longer. So I need to make sure that it is exactly the right dimensions from the side of the kayak um, to uh, to minimize the both uh, the how far out it sticks from the kayak and to make sure that it's going to function. cut that to length and then I'm going to do the same drill pattern on the other end and then we'll be back. Well, turns out I didn't actually videotape uh, actually bolt or drilling and bolting the other side together or putting these plates on and drilling these plates. Uh, so you're just going to have to go through this uh, uh, with a narration. So this plate here is eight inches and it's got three bolts that, that are drilled into it and they go into the gear track. And then I have these two bolts which are through bolted through this um, all the way through the the spanner here and then uh, an eighth inch or three or uh, quarter inch plate I think. Yeah quarter inch plate on top of that um, bolted together. Now I put the quarter inch plate on there because it looked like we might be getting a little compression on some of these when I bolted them so I just thought that that would give it a little bit of uh, durability and you know the whole thing here is about durability so that's what I did. Now I start well I tried to do this on the other side but um it would be impossible for me to get an entire project done without screwing it up. So let's go look at what I did over there. So on here, I did bolt it through. I did uh, two bolts through. And what I found was that the area that I had originally planned on mounting this, it, it wouldn't work. In fact, I had it I had it moved all the way up to near the near the end of the gear track here, and it was almost interfering with the cup holder. But um, I uh, I realized that I couldn't put the the uh, seat where I needed it, so this had to be bumped back. Well, when I did that, I realized that this gear track is not parallel. This one's not parallel to the one on the other side. So uh, when I moved it back, now these holes didn't line up anymore. So uh, I had to, I had to pivot. Uh, so I, what I did was three eighths inch plate on top with a bolt on either side. And that, when I bolt those down, just clamps it together tight. And that seems to work out great. And now I have the ability to move this forward and backwards as needed. And all I have to do is loosen this clamp up here to, to make that all happen. Now, also, I added uh, some ABS plastic to the end. Uh, I routed a, a rabbit around the outside so that a portion of this fits down inside the, the tube. And then I put a screw in it to hold it in place. Um, so that generally keeps water out of it. 
but no, I'm sure water's probably getting trapped in there. But um, I think it looks much better that way, so that's what I did. Okay, let me give you my initial impressions about the onboard uh, kayak cart here, or the imitation landing gear, if you will. Um, my biggest concern when I was, you know, designing all this was my ability to put the wheels on and off in the water and uh, and how I would stow them. And uh, I think the design that I came up with um, works well. I mean, you saw that clip of me putting the wheel on in the water and that was the very first time I did it. And uh, if you look at the time on it, it's like 20 seconds on the very first try, but in 20 seconds I was able to put that wheel on and I was even faster on the other side. So um, I, I it struggled a little bit in subsequent attempts, but generally speaking, I'm mean, gonna think on average I'll beat 20 seconds to put the wheel on in the water. And that's with a pneumatic, you know, wheel. So um, yeah, that, that part was absolutely not a problem. One of the things you might've noticed is on the drawing, I had the wheel um, up here on the gunwale and the, uh, the, my concern there was that it was actually interfering with the gear track and I wasn't able to put on as many uh, rod holders and stuff. And what I realized is in, in order to be able to do that, they have it resting on the actual kayak. I have to flip the handle around and, and flip the, the tire around that way. And so it was a lose-lose. I had to do all that extra work and it was interfering. So I ended up just, uh, when I pop it off here, I just flip it around and stick it in here. The wheels on the outside of the, the kayak, uh, I think it probably would even function as, a, as an outrigger if it started to go over, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, that, that part works out well. Um, actually puts a little bit of pressure on the, uh, the, the spring clip, so it holds it in place really well. So that's another wonderful feature. Uh, when I got this part installed, what I realized is, is it's a perfect place to be mounting stuff. I've got my um, live scope mounted on it. Uh, my batteries are connected to it. Uh, I believe my uh, catch board is also mounted to it. So uh, it's just an integral part of how I, how I uh, set up the kayak. And I actually, my seat's tied into it too, and I'll have videos for that in the future as well. So overall, I think that the, the structure and the usage has all been fantastic. The only real drawback is the, the weight. And I think that the Groovy on Amazon's listed as being 19 pounds. And I've got this at uh, 26, 27, something like that. I did the calcs on it. I haven't actually measured all the parts, but um, based on the calculations that I have done, uh, it should be around 26, 27 pounds. So I'm seven, eight pounds heavier than the Groovy. And, you know, I planned for that. You know, it's the SUV, like I said, of the of the uh, um, onboard uh, kayak cart. So I'm really, really happy with it, despite the fact that it's a little bit on the heavy side. So I'm I'm happy with that. Um, obviously, I'm really quite handy. So um, this is this is the right thing for me. I can see how most people would say, "Yeah, Pat, that's really cool," but I'm gonna go <laughs> I'm gonna go buy one, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but if you are handy and you want to do something like this, I would highly recommend it. It's, uh, it's been fantastic. And I'll have links in the, in the description for all the parts and places that I bought stuff. And, um, you know, be able to, to do all that. And I don't get any money from that. I just, I'll provide that as a gratis, of course. Um, so if you like what you've seen, please, as everybody says, like and subscribe and share and all that good stuff. So uh, thank you very much. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate you.